it, but the, and the important thing is when you're measuring this and you're teaching the new people how to cast, a lot of patients come in and they're holding their arm like so, and you're trying to get in there and get that cast on and get to the next patient. Try and get them to bring their arm out. It's amazing how that relaxes the muscles as well. So they're not standing there like that or sitting there like that. So relax them out. You want the full length of the arm exposed because when you start measuring your stocking or your slab material, you need the right length, otherwise you're going to come up short. So always make sure the arm's out and the fingers are straight out as well. Not curled over. You don't want the fingers crossed over or crunched up. It's not, it's not a good look inside the hands you know, three weeks later. Right, so we'll pop that on. I've got to breathe now, this is hard. <laughs> so we take our stocking net. Now the second stocking net that I use is a, what product we use, it doesn't matter what you use, we use a Pro Touch, okay, and it's a cotton one. When you're measuring this, it actually shrinks down because you're stretching it over the limb. The two goes really nicely over an arm, quite well. So we'll show you that. Do you remember what size that is? This is a two inch. Yeah. And so if we were seeing from paediatrics to adults, what sort of you ranges would, probably, would you have? You'd still go with a two inch for a child, because I mean, look, that's not really very wide. Yeah. Um, over the thumb, if you were doing a scaphoid, it would always be a one. Mm -hmm. So you're going, we're going to do a scaphoid for you. So it would be a one over the thumb. I've got some one here as well. So we take this, stabbing him, and we measure just past the crease of the elbow to just towards the fingertips. So you need really a little bit more than what you want. Over measurement is better than short. And we cut that off. So we'll just line that bit there. Then the next piece, which is a step you may or may not be familiar with, we take this piece and we measure from the tip of the thumb to just past the base of the thumb. That's if we were doing a collies, sorry. That's if we were doing a collies. No, collies is good because I'm not. If we did collies that with collies, we would put this over the thumb and roll it down, but I'll show you yeah. that later. Sorry. Oh, here we go. I'm so used to doing collies and not scaphoids. Well, no, collies are good. If you want to show collies, go for collies. No, I will do scaphoids and I'll show you that nice technique. Sorry about that. I get so used to one particular plaster. So we've taken the one. The reason we're using a one is because we're only going down the thumb to about this position here to the big joint. Okay. Note I've cut it on a little bit of an angle, which I will now. And that's because the wider part here will end up at the base of the thumb. There's more skin on view here than here. Don't pack too much of padding and too much material in here because the hand will get stuck otherwise. We open this out and make a cut down the middle here. Okay, so we take that. We've now got our stocking. And with the stocking, just roll it up like so and then place it just over the fingertips. Don't go too far down. So you know that that's where your edge is going to be here, at least one point. Come down to the thumb. Just a little twist and a hole. Let go of that. And just bring that forward. When you come back down, don't pull too tight here because this can be quite sharp and it can actually cut into the thumb space and be quite uncomfortable. So just make sure it's not too tight there. Take this and just lead it all the way down as far as you need to go. I'm just going to give that a little bit more of a split because that is becoming tight. Okay, so now I'm looking at this is about round about the correct length. What I'm looking for is that I can bend the elbow up and down without the plaster cutting into them. So this will fold back and that's about three of my finger widths that way. This top piece will come down eventually, and that'll be the palmar crease here that you're looking for. And then on here, the metacarpal heads need to be free so they can move up and down as well. So all casts are really sort of like resting casts. Um, they're not active wear. We don't want them going out and rowing boats and cutting wood and doing all that sort of thing. They're gonna rub away all the padding inside. Wings should be off as well. You didn't see that one. So then we take the thumb, and we pop this over here like so. Okay, we take our tape, splay that out at the bottom, bring that round, bring that round. Another piece, just making sure that all the skin is actually covered. 
like so. So that's ready to go. If this was a Corrie's cut, we'd have a two and it would look exactly the same except it would be bulkier. So, the next thing we're going to do now is we want to make sure that we're going to be able to get the position that we want before we get too far down the track. So if you've got a roll of bandage or soft band, pop it in their hand, cock their wrist back like so, because that's a true scaphoid position. You've lined the thumb up straight down the radial part, slide it out, and that's the position you want. You can have neutral, so it just depends where your consultant is. They might want it just left in neutral, um, but that is a true scaphoid position there. Okay. We then take our material. And because the thumb is only is not very large, and you know we've got this big piece going flapping around here, what we will do, I can do it to show you up this way. Cut like that. Roll this back up and start back at the thumb like so. So now you're taking care of the thumb. You don't have to worry about starting at the wrist, coming up, going down. It just gets you lost. Brilliant. So that comes around. Don't worry about this piece sticking up here. Like a show off, you just pin it down. Then you come round and we make another cut. And what I'm doing is I'm using this thumb as a guideline about where I need to cut my next piece of soft band. Not all the way through to the end, leave a fair bit there because you've got to fill in the space between the index finger and the thumb with some padding and bring that round. So, so now you've got two layers around the palm. And that's the that's the criteria that you need. That's the guidelines. Just peg down those edges. Bring it round at a little bit of a um, spiral effect because the arm is not like a cylinder. It's not going to go 50-50. That's just a, a little bit out of old talk now. And just start coming down. Not too much tension. The tighter you pull it, the thinner it becomes and around twice at the bottom. Two, two. Okay, that's just standard for that, so that would be 2-2. Two, two. Now we're going to take our material, and our water should be at, at the cold tap. Start pouring this out first and leave this aside. If you're in an area that actually doesn't have a plaster trap, we've used paper toweling inside the bowl. So we put four layers of paper toweling inside our bowl, and at the end we'll pull that up. There shouldn't be hardly any plaster in there if you're using plaster or paris should be none of the synthetic and then we scoop that up and we pop it in the bin so it takes care of you don't need a plaster trap that's good we've only got fiberglass downstairs yes yeah. so then you don't have to worry about putting the paper okay. lining in there but it's only if you get dip sewn on so when you do the next bit you do need gloves because it will leave resin on your hands so you're going to have to bear with me this size here did you have the other roll there compared uh, to the other roll? Two inch, yeah. So you can go down, but to a 7.5 and a 10. I prefer the 10 because this chap's got a big hand and a big arm. If you've got the smaller size and you're trying to wind your way around, um, you just can miss areas quite quickly and the laminate is not as much one over the top of the other. So the strength reduces in the cast. Um, it's quite easy to miss pieces, so instead of having really good bond double strength thing, you've probably only got one here and then one over there and maybe two over here. So it really affects it. So I'm going to use seven, which is what we call a three inch, 7.6. And this does not make the top out of it. Oh, there's water in there. Now, if you're a beginner with this product and you're unsure, you can apply it dry. It gives you a lot more time before it sets. Yeah. So if you've got time and you're not sure what you're doing, just apply it dry. Ooh, mostly red. Put that down there so it won't get on the carpet. So there's your product there. Now this one, we will start at the wrist with the scapegoat because I think I find that's easier than cutting that piece like I did with the soft band because you can pull that around too tight and end up ring barking the hand. So it's probably safer to go around at the wrist to start with and just wet that. Give it a little bit of a squeeze. 
doesn't need too much water and we'll start at the wrist like so and come around now the tension on this is not too much it's just to lay it down but not too much that you don't get the big loopy bits hanging at the bottom like so so you don't want to see it like that that's wrong all right that's not tense that's not enough tension but not too much either start bringing it round to the wrist and just look out for your creases as I say I haven't used this product before so just just bear with me on this so I'm making a cut like so again the same sort of cut as I did with the soft band same amount of length coming around the thumb so you can go right around the thumb and coming down now see I have that bit popping up don't worry about it just look for your edges as you go around make sure you don't go over your padding come up back look for that thumb to guide you keep your roll fairly close to your work the further away the roll gets as well the harder it is to control everything and bring that down so now we flatten that little bit out so don't worry about things like that don't panic about it not sticking down and then coming back and trying to redo it <laughs> <laughs> just ensure you've also done a neurovascular um, status check at the start as well as at the finish because so you don't want your patient to um, be compromised so then I'll just wet my hands again because it gets really quite sticky and I'm just going to bring the thumb down first to there and bring this bit up pull this bit down so we've got palmer crease on view and again the metacarpals are at free view at the back there as well take the second piece and if you're pretty quick with this you may be able to do it all in just that one roll if you find your room is really warm it's the summertime you might need two rolls so always just get out an extra roll this is almost setting already just spiral your way up to cover the area you need to get to back around the thumb back around the back of the hand as I say now into the front door here cut that again like so bring that round just make sure you've got no creases collect your pieces as you come around doesn't matter if they stick this they don't quite get collected because they will laminate down is almost setting this one okay there we go so it's now a little bit of a struggle because it's actually starting to set so you just need to watch that time that's plenty if you find the ends don't stick down on you and you're spending time going like this and you're not molding just grab some soap from your dispenser and put a little bit of soap on the end or hand cream soap's cheaper it's out of a dispenser mm. You, know, you can leave your hand finger marks wherever you've been then mm -hmm. but just do that just check your edges now we're going to do the molding which is like a biker's group so we get the patient to grip our hand gently there and we mold around like so and then we just push from the back here so we get that wrist cocked back and we're molding around the base of the thumb as well you can see where my fingers are so mold around the base of the thumb as well and most of the pressures with his arm <clears throat> most of the pressures with your palm yeah most yeah. of the pressures with my palm I'm using the flats of my hands when you're doing casting it's always the flats of your hands never your fingers you'll leave indents and then it'll cause an abrasion under the skin and then you've got a wound pretty quick 24 48 hours you've got an ulcerating wound so we just hold that take the time to actually mold so molding inside here notice how I'm molding but the arms not rotating at all I'm doing like a three point molding here so that would be one across the top two would be here and this is like just a point to actually make sure that the splint or cast is having contact with the skin so it's a contact molding that you do and it's from both sides you push from both sides so you want to see that drop down like that so you actually need to see a really good shape of the hand it's almost like as if you've stuck them in wax and taken them out just smooth that off so they're flat 
And what that does is when the patient's doing things as time goes by, when they're rotating their arm, because as you open a door, do your buttons or do whatever, the wrist does rotate. So you're wanting to prevent that, as well as extension and flexion of that wrist. And that's almost set. Check the neurovascular status and you're done. Okay, any questions on that one? So if you don't use um, water to wet her, yeah. 